Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your ham radio Elmer on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Received a, uh, an email from Pete, uh, KQ4JFR, and he has some questions about um, SWR meter, linear amplifier, antenna tuner, not so much about the transceiver. So uh, what he has is a, an FTDX 3000, uh, an LDG tuner that's good for a kilowatt, an AL811H, looks to me like that's the four tube, and I think an NFED half wave. And his questions um, are understandable and uh, maybe show a little too much concern for what the SWR is, but when you see it changing, you may you may get a little bit suspicious. Um, let me bring up his um, his email to me on the screen. Okay, so he's got a series of questions, and I have rewritten the questions in a way for me to uh, to better understand. And uh, here's what that looks like. Again, I've written down the equipment that I I believe that he has, and um, he wants to know, should he tune into the dummy load that he has and then switch to the antenna, or really the antenna tuner? And then what does he tweak again? Does he adjust the LDG tuner? Because it has, it's really pretty smart. It has steps. You can step uh, capacitance and inductance, I think. Then if necessary, uh, he asks the question about should he tweak the knobs on the, the linear amplifier? because it's seeing a different load. He's tuned it to 50 ohms. Now the amplifier maybe is seeing something different. Uh, he sees a different SWR when he switches to the linear, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the best way to tune a linear amplifier is what I want to get into, because he described his tuning procedure, which I haven't shown on the uh, email, because I didn't like it. Um, I, I don't want it to be done that way. So the question becomes, um, what do you do? What, um, how do you maneuver all this equipment? So you got it up on the desk. It's cost a lot of money and you got a thousand one amplifier. Um, let's do this first. Should he tune into the dummy load and then switch to the antenna? Probably, and the reason for that is you're doing that off the air. When you switch to the antenna tuner, then, yeah, you want to, and we'll get to how to tune the linear amplifier, you want to readjust the plate load and the plate tune control just a bit um, because that is necessary. You always want to make sure that the amplifier is linear, that it's tuned properly. Change in SWR. I looked at the linear amplifier. It does not have an SWR meter, so... He has one in the LDG tuner and one in the transceiver. If I understand his, correct, his question correctly, and I hope I do, the uh, transceiver, when it switches from the antenna tuner to the linear, is looking at a different circuit. It's looking at an antenna tuner built into the linear amplifier. That's right. The linear amplifier has its own antenna tuner. Um, in that case, it's a Pi L. It could be a Pi network. Could be lots of things. Could be a Pi L even. Those are all different kinds of circuits, but they accomplish the same thing. They take the impedance from the transceiver and match it to the input impedance of the linear amplifier. The linear amplifier tubes. I don't know the input impedance off the top. Um, I know the plate dissipation and how much they can run. Let's say combined, there, there are 100 ohms. So if you didn't have a tuned input, you'd have a two to one SWR. So you have this switch device that I've shown in several videos that basically is a miniature antenna tuner and it's switched with a band switch and it's designed to provide a match without any manipulation at all. So yeah, if the SWR at the uh, system is high and then you switch to or low, and you switch to the linear amplifier, it may be a little bit different. 
Now, if it's high, then you need to have it adjusted, and you can do that, but you have to do it very carefully, incredibly carefully, because it has to be done with the amplifier on and keying into it. The voltages in the amplifier will kill you in the blink of an eye if you do something silly. And um, so whatever you do, if you don't know how to do that, don't do it. If you do know how to do it, be exceedingly careful because you can at at the kind of voltages present in a linear amplifier you're dead so just keep that in mind so if the input impedance of the amplifier is 50 ohms it may look a little bit different than what the uh, LDG tuner is seeing and that's okay um, so if you switch from the dummy to the antenna tuner, yeah, you have to retweak, and we'll talk about that. Change in SWR, yes, that'll happen. What's Now I want to discuss what's the best way to tune a linear amplifier. It'll take just a couple of minutes. I don't like the way it's described in um, the Ameritron instruction book. What I do is I put the load control to zero all the way to the left, all the way down. Usually it'll hit the stop. Put the plate tune control in the approximate location for tuning that band. Put a little bit of drive, 5, 10 watts, into the amplifier. Adjust the plate tune control for a max out. If with 10 watts in, you might get 100 watts out. And then adjust the load control just a bit. You're going to come off the stop of the stop that you hit and readjust the tune control. So you're tuning for max out. The next procedure will be more drive and the load control will have to be higher. So you're going to run the drive up from, let's say, 10 to 20 watts, 25 watts. Key it, adjust the load control for max out, the tune control for max out. Let up on the key, do it again, max out, max out. Each time you increase the power, the load control is necessarily going to go higher. All right, so maybe we've done 10 watts and 25 watts. I would go maybe to 50, 60 watts, same process, tune for max out. If the linear amplifier has a statement as to its maximum power, you want to stay below that probably, or right at it, but not go beyond it. It doesn't say what the maximum power is for the AL811H. It just says 450 mils, so uh, ballpark, um, I forget what the voltage is, I think it's 1700. That might um, be about 800 watts output. So put the drive next to maybe 65, 70 watts, key it, tune for max out. The load control is going to need to be a little bit higher. Just the tune control, load control, tune control, let up. Each time tuning for a max out, don't pay any attention to the dip. It does not matter. The play current dip is meaningless at this point. If the amp can take 100 watts uh, that you're using, Go ahead and go to 100 watts, same process. Low control is probably going to be a lot higher. Again, low control is going to go up. The output's going to go up. Tune control, output's going to go up. Load control, you may find a, a spot where it goes up, and then that's it. Load control, that's it. You're done. Now, there's one more step, and here's why I like to do this. Let's say you have a transceiver that will put out 100 watts. The first part of a word may drive it beyond 100 watts until the circuits may may until the circuits in the transceiver go wait a second only 100 watts out i gotta throttle back just to hear so uh, the alc circuit takes over you may want to in increase the load control just a bit more why because we know that each time we increase the output the load control needs to be a tad higher so move the load control just a tad higher maybe if if the load control is if the you know dial markings are five and then a half mark and then six maybe move it to five and a half so key it for max out tune it for leave that low control high again tune the tune control for max out and then leave it alone you are done that will guarantee that when you're running power you're not going to be distorted and splattering all over the band and annoying everybody else. Um, 
it if you're going to run less than 100 watts of drive let's say let's say the amplifier can take 65 watts of drive max and you tune it up for 65 you increase the load control and tweak the tune control just a bit but you want to run 30 watts or 40 watts, <clears throat> which is what I do all the time. Just dial your drive back. Don't retune the amp. Just dial your drive back. Um, if you switch from the um, <clears throat> from the um, dummy load to the antenna tuner, yes, you will need to retune because you want to keep the amplifier linear. It needs to be tuned. So if you tune up into the into the dummy when you switch to the um, uh, antenna tuner, you will again need to go back one step, tune for max out, and then increase the load control, adjust the tune control. Each time um, that you retune, you're going to need to do both knobs, tune for max out, except the last step where you increase the load control, you're going to, the output's actually going to drop and the grid current's going to drop, and then do the plate tune control. Um, I know it's confusing, and part of that has to do with how meters work and SWR meters. That's another thing, too, is let's say you have an SWR meter somewhere in the scheme of things, and maybe you've got one in the linear amplifier and one in the antenna tuner. They very easily could see different values, and um, part of that has to do with um, the... Um, the way they, they sample the SWR, let me bring that up on the screen next. Okay, so here's what I drew as best I could. And it's sort of a cut down schematic of the two most common types of SWR meters. And a lot of the circuitry is the same. They use diodes, like a 1N34 or something along those lines. And then they have a sample circuit. The sampling circuit could be a rod through a channel, or it could be the center conductor with the braid still attached, or it could be a toroidal coil with the, um, the wire from the in and out connectors going right through the middle of it. Each of these sample voltages, uh, this one's easy to look at. This was most common up until oh, probably 20 years ago. <clears throat> So the diodes measure the vo uh, sample of voltages and display it on the meter. And by switching the meter, you can set it for maximum and then see the reflected power. Same thing here. This one happens to be, again, these are just sort of missing a lot of p parts and pieces on purpose because it gets too complicated. But again, uh, this toroid is sampling the uh, voltage going both directions. So SWR meters sample voltages, voltages on the lines, VSWR. And it looks like this, right? Because you've got voltages. If you're running an antenna tuner, it may not be as extreme, but there may be some changes. And therefore, the SWR is going to change depending on the location in the circuit. So if you had 10 feet of coax, you may get a very different value. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please do so. If you have a question, post that below. Uh, I've uh, indicated a Patreon account if you want to support the channel. I'm Jim, W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube, saying thank you. Thanks you very much for watching. See you the next time.